Hi everyone, welcome to today's session. Today we'll be walking through how to create Excel reports that have a live link to Business Central via what we refer to as an OData link. Um, for today's demo, we're gonna be walking through just a very simplified version of a sales by customer by item report. And it's going to include these fields. So we're gonna uh, show the sell to customer name, the posting date of the transaction, the document number, the item number, item description, quantity sold, sales and cost, gross profit, and gross margin. Um, so the main driver of this report is actually going to be the item ledger entries report. Um, and then a few of these fields, such as item description, uh, we're going to need to pull that with a VLOOKUP from the items table. And then the sell to customer name, we're actually going to pull in the posted sales shipments table. We're gonna keep this report uh, pretty basic, but you could also add in uh, posted sales return receipts, posted sales credit memos, if you got a lot of stuff going on, which you most likely do. Um, so those are also similar tables that we would need to pull in if we were doing a full-blown report. Again, we're gonna keep this one kind of basic and go ahead and get started. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is go to Business Central and navigate to the web services page. And this page hosts different queries, different pages. Um, you'll likely have just some out of the box ones already here. I'm gonna show you how to create our own, but this process is actually the same process you would use to use OData links in Power BI. Um, Excel hosts the same capability with the Power Query Editor. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new page here. And in the object ID, I'm actually gonna search for the page I need. So I'm gonna click into this little drop down here and then click select from full list. And from here, I'm going to search item ledger entries, which is uh, the page ID is 38. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And then we're gonna give it a name. Um, so I'm just gonna call this item ledger entries demo report. And then when we click this publish button, you got to kind of click off of it and go back in. You'll notice here that there is a URL that populates for us. So I'm just going to grab that URL and copy it. And we're going to head back over into our Excel report. In the data ribbon, we're going to um, choose get data. And then from other sources and then O data feed. Once this populates, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste that URL straight into this box here and click OK. It'll take a moment to run and populate some information for us. Um, sometimes you will receive this error, uh, especially if you're transitioning in and out of different databases. So I always like to go to get data, data source settings and clear any active permissions, just delete them and then Another useful tool here is to go into query options and clear the cache. So we're going to try that again. We're going to go get data from other sources, OData feed. Paste that link right here and click OK. And uh, the first time you do this after clearing, you will have to sign in. So I'm going to choose organizational account and just use my regular email that I use for all of my um, my email and my business central. And then once I connect, it should give us some data here. All right, so this uh, box comes up and it's giving us a preview of the data. And this would be great as is if we wanted to run maybe a historical report. However, I wanna run this one just for July of 2022. So I'm gonna go ahead and click transform data and the Power Query Editor will come up. And if you're familiar with Power BI, this is very similar. And I'm just going to do a couple filters here. First of all, I'm going to filter on the posting date. Um, date filters between July 1st and July 31st. And then I'm also going to add an additional filter for entry type because I only want to show sales for the month, not any purchases or you know inventory adjustments, anything like that. So I'm going to narrow it down even further. Once that done, that is done, we're just going to click close and load. And uh, this uh, query is actually refreshing live data from the system. 
I do like to rename these queries because we're going to have multiples. So if you just right click on them and click rename, we can call this item ledger entries. And then we can also call this tab you know, item ledger entries. These source tabs can be hidden later. I'm going to leave them open for this demo. But now I'm just going to link uh, my report. So I know that posting date is there. I'm going to go grab it. I know that the document number exists. So I'm going to grab that. Next is the item number. And then I know the item ledgers also have quantity. So I'm going to scroll to the right here and grab the, just the normal quantity field. We're also going to grab sales amount actual and cost amount actual. So there's expected, there's actual. We definitely want the actual. And then I'm going to grab the cost amount actual. From here, we can do a very simple gross profit calculation. So sales uh, plus the negative cost amount would give us gross profit. And then we can do the uh, gross margin by taking gross profit divided by the sales amount. Uh, we can do some additional formatting here, make it you know pretty. But for now, this looks good. Um, the next thing that I know I need is item description. So I know that that exists on the item card. So I'm going to go create another web services page for the item card. So I'm going to select page in object ID. I'm going to select from the full list and search for items. And it's this uh, page 31. If you're ever con uh, concerned because there are there do tend to be some that are named similarly, you can always go and check out that page. Uh, see if it's that what you need. If it doesn't hit the next one, I'm going to choose this uh, page 31 and I'm just going to give it a name. So call this items demo report. I'm going to publish it. And then I'm just going to grab that link. Go back to my Excel report. Data, get data. From other sources, go data feed. I'm going to paste that right in here. Click OK. And in a moment, it should load and give me all of my item card data. Again, sometimes that will pop up on us. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear my data source settings again. Um, typically, if you only work in one database, uh, you won't have to do this. But because I'm you know, a support specialist and we have different clients, I, I am in and out of a lot of databases. So sometimes I have to do this quite often. I'm going to go back into Get Data, O Data Feed, repaste that URL. It'll likely ask me to sign in again. Connect. All right, and I don't want to do any modifications here. I want to pull in my entire item list, so I'm just going to click load. And even while that's populating, I can go ahead and rename the tab. So I'll just call this items. I'll also rename the query. Just call it items. Move that to the side here. And then I'm just going to do a simple VLOOKUP. So equals VLOOKUP this item in this data set and return the second column. All right, so that looks good. The last piece that I need is the sell to customer name. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, posted sales shipments and create a page for that. And I'm just going to search again for posted sales shipments. And it's page 130. I'm going to give it a name. And go ahead and publish it. Grab my link. Back into here. And sometimes it does take a moment for the publishing link to be live. So that also may be why it's uh, it throws an error at first. But I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get it. I'm going to clear my cache again. I'm also going to clear my data source settings. Try it again. Just going to repaste. It'll likely ask me to sign in again. 
And these are all one-time setups. So the in the future, it will not take nearly as long to do the daily refresh of this report. Um, and to refresh it, you just go up to the data ribbon. Um, I'm also gonna transform this one. I'll come back to that concept. And I'm also going to filter this one by posting date. So I know it exists here, but it's kind of off to the right a little bit. Here it is. So I'm just gonna do those same date filters that are between July 1st and July 31st. And that's the only filter I'm gonna do for this one. I'm just gonna click close and load. It's gonna give me a new tab here and I could call this one posted sales shipments. Rename the quarry. All right, and now um, the first two columns are, are the ones that I need. So I'm gonna use a VLOOKUP to pull the customer name based on the doc number. So VLOOKUP that document number in this data set and return the second column. All right, so my report looks good. Um, you can, you know, drag this down until you start, you know, seeing zeros. You can delete those. That would just be an extra step you need to pull in. Another option is you could kind of use the if error formula uh, to show the ones that don't return anything as like a blank field as an option. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these for now. Actually, I'll leave a single row there. So um, if you're just uh, refreshing this report and the build is done, you can just go ahead and go to the data ribbon and click refresh all and it'll talk to BC just the way that Power BI does and it will refresh the report for us. So um, there haven't been any changes since I did this and a lot of these were zero costs so we can just ignore those but I'm going to go ahead and post uh, and ship and invoice a, a new sales document here and we'll see if we can get it to show up. I'm just going to go to sales orders. And I'm going to create a new one. Just going to choose my customer here. Let's do Alpine Ski House. Now, posting date, I'm going to change this so that it will show up in our report date range. I'm just going to throw just one of our items here. I'm going to go with the conference bundle. And let's sell 10 of these. That looks good. So now I'm just going to ship and invoice this. And it may prompt me for dimensions, uh, but nope, it does not. So that looks good. So now I'm just going to click refresh again. And we should now see that new uh, sales shipment. There it is right here. It's the uh, Alpine Ski House. It's my conference bundle with a quantity of 10. So again, you could do some really fancy things here. Um, you know, most companies will have sales return receipts and sales credit memos. So you may need to pull those tabs in only to populate the sell to customer name. Everything else should already be what you need. And uh, yeah, that completes it. Uh, thank you all for, for joining today. I appreciate your time and have a great day.